Oh my god, you guys actually did a hundred years of physics and a whole civilization on this crap? In the quantum theory equation, the cat is alive and dead at the same time. <laughs> really? Holy shit. What about the flea? What about the flea on the cat? Is the flea confused about the state of the cat too? This is what quantum theory is based on. Like, just check this out. I don't know what these guys were taking in Copenhagen, but like, it was bad shit, bro. Like, they, they had the wrong drugs. At the same time was this experiment that was made that's called the double slit experiment. You guys all heard about it? Spiritual people are really excited about the double slit experiment for the exact wrong reason. And I've been trying to explain this. I've been debating this with like Chopra and Manas and all these guys that like, oh, the double slit experiment explains consciousness. And it's insane. It's like so wrong. It's not even funny, right? It's like wrong, as wrong as you can go. In the standard physics, there is nothing in the double slit experiment that says anything about consciousness, nothing. So like to say, that the double slit experiment, Copenhagen interpretation explains consciousness or says that, you know, consciousness has anything to do with physics is, is wrong. Like, and this is why the mainstream is laughing at it. The Copenhagen interpretation just says that there's a collapse of a waveform in which, you know, when there's an observation, when there's measurement that is made, then the state collapses into its final state. But when it does, it does not collapse into what the observer hoped the thing would be. Like it has nothing to do with consciousness, meaning like it's not because, you know, the observer wanted a cat that the cat appear. Like he, it could be a crocodile. It could be half of a crocodile and half a cat. It could be like, could be a monster from another universe. I mean, it has nothing to do with the observer, zero. Right? So like to make that leap and that interpretation is, it, for classical physicists is wrong. And, and that's why they ignore that stuff and they just laugh at it. It would be good if they actually understood that part that like it's not, not related and it was incorrect for the What the Bleep movie to like make that association. This is what happened. You shoot a photon and an electron at a slit, right? And you get a pattern on the backboard of like dots if you put two slits and you shoot the, the, the particle, all of a sudden you get an interference pattern on the backboard as if the particle split, you know, and it was in two state, and then it recombine and interfere with itself on the other side. And so then they went, oh my God, the particles can be in two states at the same time, in two places. They can be a wave and a particle at the same time. Since then, they teach physics this way, right? They tell you a particle can be a wave and a particle. They can be in two states, like it's called superposition. And so neurotic insanity is occurring in the head of student. Like, oh my God, the universe is like something that's completely irrational, that can be anything at any point. And then they put a camera there. And the part is, is that, you know, they put a measuring device to try to figure out at exactly in which slit the bloody thing went, right? To see if it's really in like two states at the same time. And then they get a third result. All of a sudden get the dots back and it's like, oh my God. But the part that they don't mention is that the thing that's measuring, right? That makes the effect that the observer is changing the result. The thing that's measuring has to be tuned to the size of the slits. It, it's not just any measuring device you can put in there that gives a different result. So basically, there was a person in Copenhagen that tried to explain to Einstein and Bohr and all those guys, wait, <laughs> you know, you don't need to go like into quantum insanity, right? And like make the world, because basically for a hundred years, they've been teaching everybody, don't try to visualize it. It's not anything you can visualize. It's not mechanical. They abandoned all mechanical things. They took Schrodinger's equation and made it into something that's like a probability curve. So like only physics 
at the quantum level can only be written in terms of probabilities. And it's all based on randomness, meaning like, that's why I'm saying it has nothing to do with consciousness because it's not based on the conscious observer producing anything. It's saying that like, it's completely random and you don't know anything about any state until it's measured. And then it collapses into something and you have no idea what it's gonna be, right? So that the typical example is a cat in a box. So if you have a box and you have a cat in it, this is what quantum theory is based on. Like, just check this out. And you have a vial in there full of poison, right? And there's a, there's a hammer in the box. I mean, like, this is remarkable. This is remarkable. This is, this is when the galactic community goes, oh my God. And then they have a hammer in there and it's on a random generator, right? It, which no such thing has ever been found, but never mind that, right? Like we haven't found anything that actually is completely random. We can't find anything that, you know, even in background noise in the universe, we find like patterns, right? So, but let, let's just assume there's like such a thing as an ideal random generator. Then the random generator is attached to the hammer and like it, the hammer will only fall when the random generator like outputs something like specific, but you don't know when that's gonna happen at any point, could be any time in the universe, right? And then the box is closed. So since the observer is outside the box, you don't know if the cat is alive or dead. In the quantum theory equation, the cat is alive and dead at the same time. <laughs> It's in state of superposition, like it's in both states. Really? Holy shit. No, seriously, you guys, because you're confused about the state of the cat, you actually believe that the universe is confused about the state of the cat. Like, is this like human centric or what? Like, you really think that because you're confused, the rest of the universe is confused. And you think because it's in a cardboard box, the universe is unaware of the state of the cat. You've now isolated it from the universe. Are you serious about this shit? Really? Oh my God, you guys actually did a hundred years of physics and a whole civilization on this crap. I'm like, oh my God, what about the flea? What about the flea on the cat? Is the flea confused about the state of the cat too? You know, because the flea is an observer. What about the frame of reference of the flea? What about the microbe on the cardboard going, yeah, there's a cat. Uh, so who gets to say if it's alive or dead? The flea or the human that's confused or what? Like, I mean, subsystems, right? Like, I have been mentioning this. It's in our my uh, biophysics paper in the introduction. I'm like, you know, I don't say it so bluntly, you know, but I, <laughs> I'm like, what about subsystems, right? <laughs> Sutskin, one of the best physicists on the planet, just mentioned it in his paper that he just published, like, you know, we have a problem with subsystems, like, no kidding, like, you guys didn't think of that before, like, but the thing is, is that in Copenhagen and in during those years, there's this guy, de Bouglier, which is like very well respected physicist of the time. He wrote the equation for wave functions, like he's expert at it. And he went and talked to Einstein and Bohr and all these guys and said, wait, I can describe the double slit experiment with fluid dynamics. Now, I didn't know this at the time. 20 years ago, I independently said, wait, the assumption is that when you shoot the particle at the slit, that's uh, in a free field, meaning that it's in some kind of a perfect vacuum, that the, that the particle is isolated from everything else. But it's not. What if the particle is actually part of a field? Just like a boat, right, on the ocean makes wave when it moves, right? So yeah, it's a particle and a wave, but it's not such an esoteric crazy concept. It's just because when it moves, it makes waves, right? So if you have one slit, it just get the particle on the other side. But if you have two slit, the wave that the particle makes go through the second slit interferes and you get interference patterns like, oh, really? And then, you know, and I came up with that on my own, you know, like 25 years ago, like Joe Blow in the van over there, like 
Oh yeah, you know, that would work. And then of course, if you put an instrument and you're measuring, when you're measuring, you're making waves in that same field. So then these waves interfere with the waves that the particle are making, and now you get a third result. Dude, really? The cat is alive. <laughs> if the universe is needing a live cat, it's got one. If the universe is needing a dead cat, it's got one. Like, it's not like everything is interacting with everything and changing everything. The flea on the cat is, you know, participating in the field interaction. You know, the microbe on the box is participating in the field interaction. You are participating in the field interaction. And if you're confused, it doesn't mean the rest of the universe is confused. Like if the tree falls in the forest and you're not there to hear it, the universe really doesn't care. <laughs> It really doesn't give a shit. It's like it's got all kinds of other things. Birds and like ants and all this stuff. They all are hearing the tree fall. And if you miss it, it's kind of like too bad, brah. You know? The problem is that the, the spiritual community latches on to the double slit experiment as like this is the proof that the observer is important, but it, for the wrong reason. And so then it gives you the wrong picture, and so then it actually propagates more neurotic insanity that like physics and science and, and the physical world is this crazy like esoteric thing that you can never put your finger on, when in fact it's actually just all fluid dynamics. The right understanding is that there's a field that's interacting with everything. And that's coordinating all events, meaning that there's information exchange across all systems, across all frame of reference that makes reality what it is. It's not, you know, an observer is not like a human being. It's not a cat. It's not a flea. It's, it's the whole thing. It's every atom observing the universe from its own perspective, feeding information to the field that makes up the field what it is, you see? So then you start to feel the connectivity, you start to feel the relationship, the interaction that makes up reality, right? And, and now you can start to write physics in a completely different way, right? So that the start of quantum theory is correct. But where it went because of the interpretation of the double state experiment went sideways. If you like this video and you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out the next video on our channel.